Hi friends, in this session we will revise all the important formulas for FRM part 1 2022 session. For this purpose we are going to use the Falcon Edifice 2021 formula sheet which is exactly same for the 2022. So there is no change in the syllabus so all the formulas are almost same. Right, so if you want to download this particular sheet you can download it from Falcon Edifice download section or second I will also drop the link of this particular download sheet or the formula sheet in the description of this video. So simply check that uh, link to download the this particular file PDF file. So here first we have like uh, complete formula set as in book by book. So first we'll start with the book one and then so on like book two, three and four. Right. So first the calculation of beta. So beta calculation is required in two specific locations. First is the hedge ratio, which is in the book number three. And second is the CAPM model. C-A-P-M, CAPM model. Okay. So what is the formula here? So formula is very simple. Covariance of x y in simple terms or return of i return of m return of i as in the return of stock and return of market divided by sigma m square that is a market's variance okay this is also called as market variance mv in short okay so this particular formula sheet works in a particular manner see here so right side provides you the formula left side provides you the insight of this formula that is what are we calculating expected use case so here see cap m and hedge ratio calculation and accident points so accident points are the common errors committed by the students in the exam relating to this particular formula. So here you can see in denominator, it is sigma of market square. Do not confuse it with the sigma of stock. Generally students end up using sigma of particular stock in the denominator and whole calculation will go wrong. And GAAP will ensure that if you do this particular calculation or this mistake, your answer will be matched. Okay. So you will have the specific answer which will match with this particular mistake. So make sure you're not going to commit such error. Okay, because you will end up thinking that you got the answer, but actually that's a wrong answer. So make sure you use the proper formula. Second error is the Sigma M use of Sigma M very uncommon, but still like this is a common error. Yeah, grammatically incorrect, like very common and uncommon like that. Okay, fine. So don't commit this mistake as well. Don't use this Sigma M, right? Next, the capital asset pricing model here we are calculating required return, okay, which is a return required by any investor to invest in a specific security. So formula for this is RF plus this is the formula. I'm just writing it here. RF plus beta RM minus RF or you can also write it as expected return of the market. Now here you have to remember this is market return market return. I'm just writing it everything in the short because we have to finish this session in a short time because even the main students will watch this video and you don't have enough time to watch the videos and so on. This particular part that is RM minus RF is called as market risk premium. This is market risk premium. And then you have to multiply it with the beta. If GAP provides you the information about the market risk premium, don't go for RM minus that is this is a general error committed by the students. GAP will provide you say RF is equal to 5% and RM minus RF that is a market risk premium premium is equal to say 10% then you don't have to go by like say RF plus beta whatever is the beta 10 minus 5 you don't have to do this this is wrong because this 10% itself is this part okay that is the RM minus RF this is RM minus RF okay if GAR provides you the information of market return market return of say 10% then you can go for 10% minus 5%. Okay. I hope you got the idea. RM minus RF is market risk premium. RM is market return. So based on the information, you have to use the formula. And this is again the very common mistake which students commit in the exam. The next is the capital market line. Capital market line, not very useful formula. Remember this particular part is the Sharpe's ratio. The slope of the capital market line is the uh, sharp ratio. Next are the performance measures, performance measures for any asset or the portfolio, depending on the which performance measure you are using. Now here we have three, four performance measures. So first is the trainers measure. Second is the Sharpe's ratio and then alpha recent in recent exams. We saw, uh, saw that GAP is asking trainer and sharp in the same question. Again, it is not necessary, but likely. Okay. So what happens in the exam? So first you have to remember for this particular formula, this is a trainers measure. The formula is very simple. That is expected return of the portfolio minus RF divided by the beta. 
why beta beta is the asset specific or sorry beta is the market specific risk for a particular security now here if you have the well diversified portfolio then only you can use the trainers measure in theory if you get the question in theory format then you have to remember this if ga provides you the undiversified portfolio and ask you to calculate the trainers measure calculate the trainers measure right this is very simple so when you see the beta you have to remember you are going for the well diversified portfolio because beta only considers the market risk right now here the trainers measure uses beta gaf will provide you the information like expected return of portfolio rf is equal to n is equal to something gaf will provide you the beta of the portfolio and also sigma of the portfolio gaf will provide you the four informations and general common like common mistake students commit in this particular part is in exam they will get confused that which one to use sigma p or beta p same is also applicable for the sharps measure for the sharps measure also gaf will provide you the all these four informations or the four key points uh, points and then you have to use the sigma here so remember for sharps measure you have to use sigma for trainers measure you have to use beta so how to remember this without getting confused so you know the disease called tuberculosis tb so trainers beta so this is only confusion area everyone remembers this numerator part okay so our expected return of the uh, portfolio minus rf in the sharps measure sharps measure s s okay so this is easy to remember right so don't commit any mistake so now you won't feel this particular problem but the students who are not focusing on this particular part this is a very common mistake and gaf knows this so gaf will ensure some students commit this particular type of mistake next is the jensen's alpha okay so just to elaborate on the formula remember this is the one setup of the formula which is given in the book second setup is instead of rf gaf will provide you the return of the benchmark and then gaf will uh, ask you to calculate calculate the trainers measure with respect to the benchmark meaning instead of rf you have to take rb or gaf will provide you the minimum r minimum return minimum which is acceptable for any portfolio or the asset so in that particular case so remember you have to calculate or replace rf with r minimum okay so there is not defined formula for the like uh, like trainers measure so this is general formula for the trainers measure then there are the replacements or the variations of the trainers measure the same is applicable for the sharps portfolio sharps measure then this is rf rf erp minus rf divided by sigma p here also the same problem can happen and again rm rf Uh, you have to re replace uh, R minimum, R benchmark, and so on. So always remember this. Again, Sharpe's measure is useful in undiversified portfolio or single asset. Fine. Next, Jensen's alpha. It is nothing but expected return of the portfolio minus CAPM return, CAPM return. Okay. So this is CAP CAPM's formula, CAPM's formula. Fine. Okay. <clears throat> and then the accident point is this okay so you might get a question specifying required rate of return which is just latter term after erp so gaf will provide you the jensen's alpha question where gaf will provide you er sorry yeah erp and gaf will provide you required rate of return instead of this particular formula some students mug up the formula and they forget that this particular like rf rf this part this say capm part is required rate of return only so you have to remember you have to use the required rate of return the next is the sortino ratio sortino ratio again very easy formula erp r minimum gaf will provide you the specific information and in denominator it is under root msd mean square deviation minimum so again this information will be directly provided you don't have to worry about this information you have to simply take the under root and then use the formula and you will be able to calculate it right <clears throat> again this is the this is variation of sharp useful where returns are not symmetric again the theory point uh, now the exam is more into theory so i have to remember this is also testable like when to use the sort you know so when the returns are not symmetric okay <clears throat> okay and this is the accident point don't use rf here in sort you know ratio you have to use the r minimum next is the information ratio calculation so information ratio 
ERP, you don't have to worry about like the first part of the formula. Simply calculate the alpha P or this ERP minus ERB, return of the benchmark, expected return of the benchmark. And in denominator, we have tracking error, TE. So tracking error will be provided in the exam. You don't have to worry about it. You have to simply focus on the, like the rest of the formula, like how this formula works and then simply solve this. Okay. Gaff will also like might provide in this particular manner, like excess return over the benchmark excess return of the portfolio over the benchmark. So again, remember this is the whole numerator. Then there are the multi-factor model, APT, French pharma model. So just very simple note here. You don't have to remember these formulas. If you remember the regression equation and if you understand the multi-factor regression or the multivariable regression, then this particular part is easy to solve. Gaap will provide you the beta coefficients. Say if there is a two variable model, Gaap will provide you the beta intercept everything. Gaap will say the previously say the X, Y, Z, sorry, X1, X2 or F1, F2, factor one, factor two, where this is this. And now the X1, X2 is this. What is the change? So there are multiple ways to ask this uh, question. What is the change? Total change in previous values versus current value. So what will this simply new values like this? Okay. So what will be required or the expected return new or like this, depending on the situation, this is simple plug and play. You need to only remember how the multi-factor model works. Same is applicable for the APT model. Same is applicable for the pharma and French model, three-factor model. The only thing is Gaap will provide you this small minus big SMB and HMLs value. High minus low and small minus big firms returns values are, will be provided in the uh, exam. And you have to simply take the question uh, like values and use it in the your question to calculate the answer. Right. Next is the book two quants. First is the joint probability formula. Joint probability is the multiplication rule. That is the uh, first. <coughs> this is the A B. It is denoted by the P of A B. So general formula is P of A multiplied by P of B. If you are working with the conditional probability, then P of A B multiplied by P of B. Right. So this is easy to remember formula. Okay, so instead of mugging up the formula, remember what you are doing here. Then next is the conditional probability formula. So conditional probability P of A given B is equal to P of AB divided by P of B. Okay. So AB is joint probability. Just to give you the quick idea of how this is going on. So P of B is here. P of a given B that is after B is happening here and then P of A B is the joint probability that is if you multiply these two you will get this. So to arrive at this conditional probability you have to simply take this P of A B divided by P of B very simple. Then independent events if the two events are independent then P of A given B will be equal to P of A or P of B given A will be equal to P of B. Not useful for the exam just for the understanding purpose. Then the expected value. Expected value is simply you will be provided with the X information, you will be provided with the probability information. Step number one calculate the uh, expected value of X. So simple step number one is simply multiply all this and sum it up. Okay, so if you take this sum, you will get the expected value of X. Again, this is applicable only for um, probability values. Okay, if the uh, particular variable is provided with the probability and one more thing, if you get this particular question, that is these type of values are provided. Remember in your calculator, you can use the one V function, which provides you the P and X information. Okay, so it is the like spreadsheet thing. You can feed the data of X and probability and you will get the direct answer. You don't have to do it manually. You don't have to use the formula. Then next is the variance. Again, you don't have to use the formula. If GAP provides you the information, feed it in your calculator. If you don't understand how to use the calculator for this purpose, watch the, watch the calculator course, which is again available for free on the website. So simply watch that video, right? Again, so this is a variance formula. Next is the covariance formula. Not very useful. Gaap will provide you the, all the information required for like this calculation. Generally, covariance is used in the calculation of the beta or correlation. And for that, Gaap will provide you the correlation. Gaap will provide you the covariance in ready-made format. There was like, I never saw any exam where covariance was asked. So you don't have to remember it. Again, next is the correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient is correlation of X, Y in this particular format. So covariance of X, Y or covariance of R, I, R, J. 
divided by sigma r i sigma r j like this fine okay this is the correlations calculation very easy next is the portfolio variance very important there is like possibility 20 percent probability that you'll get to use this particular formula in exam but there is 80 percent probability that you will see this type of formula uh, in your FRM part 2 book. Okay, so in FRM part 2 there are multiple concepts which requires this particular formula. So this formula is very simple. Variance of RP. I will write it down in my own format, in my own rhythm, the way I remembered it when I studied for the FRM exam. So this is how the formula goes. That is the sigma of portfolio where assets are 2, x and y. So sigma 1 or I will use the yeah okay we can go with the sigma a instead of going with the sigma 1 okay so sigma a w a I don't have a habit of a okay so we'll go with the this is the first asset and this is the second asset okay this is just for the remembrance like memorization purpose and not, has nothing to do with it so sigma 1 w1 square plus square in the bracket sigma 2 w2 square plus 2 into sigma 1 sigma 2 w1 w2 r12 this is the one formula like the one variation of the formula second variation is simply you can go with the you remember like this sigma 1 sigma 2 and r12 if you combine these two you will get covariance of 1 2 that is asset 1 asset 2 simple so then in that particular case the formula in this particular part it will be Two into W one W two and covariance of one two, right? So asset one asset two, simple. Next, kurtosis. Remember the meaning. Understand the meaning. Remember the use, like how it is used, the purpose of this, and then what is the skewness? Okay, this is skewness. So if you get the like this question, that is two asset port two asset portfolios question then you might need to use this particular formula okay and here the formula is for the variance and for the like standard deviation you have to simply take the under root of this formula next is the skewness skewness and kurtosis i will give the insight on both at the same time uh, i never saw any exam where ga passed the skewness and kurtosis calculation but in every exam you will get the use of skewness and kurtosis ga will provide you the information about direct information about the kurtosis and skewness and then you have to use it or interpret it or understand it so this type of question is expected. You don't have to remember these formulas, right? So really good. I think you must be very happy because I'm like deleting all the formulas. Okay. So I inserted these formulas because the students generally ask, okay, there are formulas missing in the formula sheet. So I just simply provided it. Okay. And also mentioned it. Okay. Less likely to be tested. I'm, I'm done with my job. Like I provided you the formula. I also provided with the information. I provided you the information that these formulas are not testable. Next is the Poisson distribution, binomial distribution. Now we are into the distribution chapter or from the 2020 or recent curriculum. The name of the chapter is common univariate random variables. My favorite name of the chapter is distribution because here we are discussing distribution and nothing else. So first formula is the Poisson distribution. Again, all the information will be directly provided. If not directly, GAF will provide you provide GAF will provide the information in indirect format. That is for the average GAF will provide say like uh, say there are 100 instances on an average say there are approximately 20 say 20 percent say 100 mobiles are sold by a particular shop and 20 percent on an average 20 percent smartphones return to the shop for repair on monthly basis pretty high but just taking the example so you have to remember okay 20 is the average here if the information is for the 200 then 40 is the average here from the like 200 multiplied by 20 percent is the 40 is the average here so your average will be 40 and then GAF will ask you to like use the x say x is equal to uh, 35 and then you have to calculate the probability again highly likely question and general like error committed by the student is this term okay x upon lambda or lambda upon like x to the power lambda or lambda to the power x okay don't fall for this confusion make sure you use the right term lambda to the power x 
Next is the binomials formula. This formula is again you don't have to worry about it because this NCR you can directly calculate from, calculate it from the calculator. Then p to the power x and one minus p to the power n minus x. Very simple formula. This is the probability. Sometimes probability is not directly provided. Probability will be provided in the form of information. Then you have to understand okay what is the probability here. So information like say. I will use the same example. Normally, say ideally, 20 out of 100 smartphones are damaged at the time of sale. I'm taking the example of like this. So using this, you can calculate it 20%, right? So you have to use the same information or say four out of 20. This type of information will be provided. So you have to again calculate the probability here. Okay, whatever is the probability, 20%, I guess, 20, yeah, whatever, right? Then for the binomial distribution, you have to remember the expected and variance formula in, I guess in 2019 or 2018, this particular part was asked according to me at that time, this part was not very important, but GAP asked this part. So you have to remember the expected value of X in, if the particular value or the variable follows the binomial distribution, then the expected value is calculated using the N multiplied by P and variance is calculated using NPQ. That is n multiplied by p multiplied by 1 minus p. Very simple. Next is mean of the uniform distribution a plus b divided by 2. Not likely to get tested, but again, if GAP asks you, then it is easy to calculate. Very important, this particular part. Okay, GAP will provide you the upper limit, lower limit, and then you have to simply take the minus and divide it by 12. This is the variance of uniform distribution. Okay, next is the base formula. So you already know the base. There is nothing to explain here. Just remember, you will be asked to calculate what is the A given B, not in the this particular format. It will be wrapped in the language. So you need to understand the language in the exam. And this is the most complicated part for the base question. That is understanding of the language. Next part is very simple. That is you have to take the B given A, probability of B given A multiplied by probability of A divided by probability of B. Simple, okay? In simple terms, this is the total probability of that particular event. And then these are the, this is the joint probability. Okay. Next is the population mean. Again, don't have to use the formula. Remember what is the meaning of the mean if GAP provides you. See, this particular formula is, can be used only if GAP provides you information like this. This is the X variable and these are the values. If this type of question is in the exam, then you can directly use the calculator. TIB2 plus calculator provides you this particular function, the stat function where you can fit the data and calculate the answer, right? Same is applicable for the sample mean to population mean and sample mean formula is exactly same. How you denote it is a different, okay? Then population variance, the principle is applicable here. That is, you don't have to remember the formula. Just know the formula once. Don't spend your time much here and sigma square is equal to whatever is the formula, you can directly use the calculator. This is already available in the calculator function. Then you have to remember the standard deviation. This is sigma, the standard deviation formula. It is simply the under root of variance. Calculator provides the standard deviation, not the variance. If GAP asks you the variance, then you have to square it. Sample variance, n minus one, this is the point here and the sample standard deviation spelling mistake here and minus one in the denominator and the under root okay sample covariance not likely to get tested again you can just see the formula and again if the information is provided you can calculate the covariance in the exam or using the tib2 plus calculator the simple way if Again, this formula is applicable if you are provided with the X, Y information in the number format or the big, like all the, uh, this particular variable is provided with the series of observations. Simply use the calculator, fit the values. You will get the Sigma X, you will get the Sigma Y, you will get the correlation of X and Y. Okay. With this information, you can simply calculate the covariance, multiply it, multiply three. Sample co uh, correlation coefficient. We already saw this particular formula. Then the Z value. Okay. So, so for the Z table, so observation mean population mean, so mean based on your population mean based on your observation divided by the standard deviation, you will get the Z value. This is used for the confidence interval calculation. Okay. So easy to remember. If you know the process, you know the formula. You don't have to assess to remember the formula here. 
then sampling error of the mean so sample mean minus population mean this is sampling error of the mean and standard error of the sample mean very useful very very important so sigma divided by under root of n is the formula chi square distribution not testable left not testable then sample statistic statistic minus hypothesis value is for the t statistics again this is the same formula for the z stat so here you are using uh, the formula in the format like sample statistics minus hypothesis value divided by standard error so if you get the question on z test or t test you have to use the same formula okay again you will be able to understand this formula if you know the concept here nothing like formula is here okay you have to just know the concept and you will automatically remember what to do here and this standard error is same same thing this standard error okay then the regression sample regression function okay so as such formula is like this is not a formula based thing the only thing is sorry this is the formula based thing okay so first in regression just to summarize the regression if GAAP provides the information in the say uh, x y format then you can directly use the calculator and calculator will in align function calculator will provide you the every information i'm using the equation y is equal to a plus b x or simply x plus error term so this is not possible so calculator will provide you the a that is an intercept calculator will provide you the b and with this x and y easy are easy to calculate but GAAP will provide you the information like x average y average and the information which is required this is like the and information required to calculate this again with this very easy okay so you have to first calculate the slope that is beta calculate the beta first here steps are very simple first you have to calculate the b1 i am going with the y is equal to b0 plus b1 x1 okay or x so if you get this type of question simply first calculate the b1 using the slope formula then next step you have to take the x average this information and y average and use it in this particular like i'm just restructuring this formula but like at the same time we are going for the average okay so b0 is equal to b1 x average instead of x and minus y average use this and you will get the intercept and then you can like you will get the value so b0 b1 generally there are two possibilities GAAP might ask you b1 b0 calculation okay so find the estimates second is GAAP will provide you like first you have to calculate b1 and b0 and then GAAP will say what is the value of y if x is equal to say 120 okay so once you get the b0 and b1 it is easy to calculate the y value very simple next is the financial markets and products so first is the insurance like combined ratio loss ratio plus expand expense ratio then operating ratio all these ratios are there you can again easy to these are easy to remember you can easily remember so <clears throat> nav net asset value which is required for the mutual funds simple funds asset minus funds liability minus expenses okay and divided by total shares outstanding simple call option payoff put option payoff I don't recommend using formulas here you have to use the concept you can remember these based on the concepts again same is applicable for the forward contract payoff don't try to remember the formula okay so if you know the concept you don't need to use the formula then the basis basis for the forward and spot so st minus f again you can read the information here see the hedge ratio calculation hedge ratio same old formula which we saw in the previous calculation then the beta and here you have to remember like what is in the denominator what is in the numerator okay also everything is mentioned here okay and the correlations formula same formulas like the previous example then you have hedging with the stock index futures the number of contracts is equal to beta of the portfolio so portfolio value divided by value of the future contract simple calculate this and here the confusion part will be what to do take the long position or short position this will be the common problem 
GAP generally provides the options like this A, B, C, D. In A, GAP, say I'm just taking the random example plus 4000 contracts, minus 4000 contracts, plus 6000 contracts, minus 6000 contracts. If you just remember the formula and if you arrive at the calculation of say 6000, now for you the challenge is plus, sorry, plus 6000 or minus 6000. That is to long the contract or short the contract. So that you can do or take this particular call based on your knowledge. So I have to uh, check the question. What is the question? What is the existing position? So based on that, you have to take the position, right? Then adjustment of the beta portfolio, simple. So beta star. So generally the question goes like, so this is the beta existing beta P and A is the same. And you are expected to adjust the beta of the portfolio and say you need to convert the beta of the portfolio to one. And based on that, you have to add or like, um, add or short or long or short your derivatives or futures contract. Then future value, uh, just like remember this formula. Okay. Ideally this is divided by n, m divided by n. Okay. Again, I don't recommend using the formula for this general approach should be to uh, know the concept. Okay. Why knowing the con uh, why I'm saying to know the concept instead of remembering the formula, because the way you get the question, like the nature of the question requires you to understand the formula, not to remember the formula here. Then continuous compounding rate. Again, the same thing e to the power r into n. R is your rate n is your time period A is your initial principle and F is the future value. Then forward rate agreement and the cash flow if receiving and here you have if paying now my recommendation is forget about if receiving if paying use anything any one formula whatever you prefer so l multiplied by rk minus r take rk that is the agreed rate versus the actual rate you can take any rate okay that is r that is agreed rate minus actual rate like this uh, don't worry about the plus or minus. Okay. So there are two variations, right? So R K minus R or R minus R K. So I'm saying just forget about this. Just use this. This will help you in reducing that particular struggle. Like what to use R K minus R R or like this. And then this is your notional principle. Whatever is the answer, just use this particular answer and think about it is the rate you are supposed to receive uh, greater than or less than the rate okay the actual rate so based on that you have to decide the answer okay so instead of remembering the form remember remembering the formula you can go by this route next is again cash flow for paying then the forward price so this is very easy formula forward price is equal to underlying price multiplied by this is multiplied by e to the power r this should be yeah e to the power rt r is your risk free rate and time is time period and this will give you the forward rate the next is the if there is a carrying cost so this is the i if you are using the workbook and if you are using, using the form uh, like, mm, like falcons workbook if you are the falcon students so remember there are three four variations possible for this carrying cost part so what if the carrying cost is paid in the advance? What if carrying cost or the storage cost is, uh, this should be, yeah. What if the storage cost is paid in the mid? What if the storage cost is paid in the end? So there are three possible variations of this question. Or there is one more variation. This was asked in like, I guess only one exam. And it was like storage cost is paid monthly at the end of the month. So based on that, you have to, again, you already know how to do the calculation. So I'm just saying, just giving the recall. The next is the forward price when the underlying asset pays a dividend. So dividend is adjusted with the R, R minus Q. If it is provided in the yield format, if it is not provided in the yield format or directly provided, then S0 minus present value of the dividend, dividend PV, and then e to the power RT, this is the formula. The next is the accrued interest. Accrued interest is very simple coupon multiplied by number of days from the last coupon or the settlement date divided by the days on the coupon period. So if there are six month coupon, then 180 days or depending on the what type of convention you are taking. So cash price of the bond, it is cash price is equal to quoted price plus accrued interest. Accrued interest will come from here. Quoted will be provided by the gap. Now remember quoted works in very different manner. There are variations or the variety of like in different format, the quoted uh, rate can be provided. Okay, so you have to remember 
how to use the quoted rate then the discount rate 360 divided by n 100 minus y and this square okay then cheapest to deliver this is not the formula this is the concept you have to remember the concept and then the euro dollar futures very important concept very standard formula because everything is standardized here so 0.25 is the basis change and 100 minus z and you will get the answer very very easy concept okay then this is formula forward rate implied by the not useful okay then duration based hedging p multiplied by dp divided by f multiplied by df very easy formula but we'll see this formula later okay then the r forward so my favorite formula is this like it is easy to remember r2 into t2 minus r1 into t1 divided by t2 minus t1 there is rhythm to it so simply remember the r forward just to summarize or give the quick glance of the concept so ga will provide you the information like this is t0 and this is t1 and this is t2 so ga will provide you the interest rate from say this and this okay so t0 to t1 that is say this is 6 months and 12 months interest rate will be provided and then you are uh, you will be asked to calculate the forward rate 6 months from now for 6 months that is this particular forward rate so simply use this formula so t2 stands for long term rate that is this 12 month rate and t1 stands for the short term rate right again this can you can change this to 1 year 10 year and so on it doesn't matter then put call parity there are variations to put call parity just remember one and in exam um, change it according to your uh, requirement then <clears throat> lower bound and upper bounds so remember this minimum and like this again here you have to remember it on your own nothing to explain here because to explain it you have to take the separate lecture okay this is like to explain this why a particular minimum or maximum is like this there is full chapter properties of option properties of option is this only right then you have strategies and i guess there is some mix up here okay so this particular part belongs to option strategies you don't have to worry or remember any of the formula these formulas are provided because it is provided in the book okay by gap but we are not interested in these formulas we will apply concepts here okay so again you have to remember the uh, what is a bear spread bull spread or bull call spread and so on butterfly spread everything and then based on your knowledge apply your concepts that uh, in that particular calculation or the question and calculate the payoff or the profit what is asked okay Next is the forward pricing. We already saw this. Same is applicable for the like the forward pricing is same for uh, stock and the uh, commodities. Though with the only difference being here you have different things. Okay, different parameters like the lease payment is here for the commodities, which is not applicable for the stocks. Then storage cost is applicable here. Okay. Then we have the book four valuation and risk models. One formula is missing here which is MBS formula. Okay. CPR is equal to one minus one minus S M to the power 12. Okay. So remember this conditional prepayment rate is equal to one minus one minus SMM to the power 12. Easy formula, easy to remember. See, even I remember the formula. Okay. I'm not very good with the remembering formulas. If I'm able to remember, then definitely everyone is able to remember this formula. Right. Now, next is the book four revaluation risk models. Very important value at risk in the percentage format. So Z for the particular confidence level multiplied by standard deviation where X is equal to this is the probability of like value of risk. Okay. Then Z is a critical value based on the normal distribution and for the selected table. So whatever is the here you have to remember. You have to remember the values 90%, 95%, 99%, all these values. You must remember all these values for one tail. Okay. And then you have to use it in the Z. So GAP will provide you cal calculate at the confidence level of 95%. So you have to use Z value for the 95% and you have to remember it. GAP is not going to provide you the Z values. Then on dollar basis, whatever is the war in the percentage basis, multiply with the asset value, you will get the war at the dollar basis. 
very important the conversion conversion from the days perspective so if say you are provided with the 10 day war and now you are asked to calculate the 100 day war so to arrive at the 100 day war you have to go like this war divided by first remove the impact by taking under root 10 and then multiply by 100 root under root of 100 to give the 100 days impact always remember this is called as a time translation of standard deviation this is applicable on the standard deviation the value at risk time translation works time translation works with the under root okay you have to always put under root whenever you multiply sigma or value at risk with time it should be in the under root format you cannot directly multiply it with the t then next is applicable for like next concept is the confidence level or the confidence interval translation say war is provided for 95 percent and you are asked to calculate the war 99 percent so simply the root is war 90 95 percent divided by uh, z value of 95 percent then multiply by z value of 99 percent whatever is the answer is the answer that's it next is again this is the value at risk when interest rate or the return is provided okay so if the return is provided same formula that is remaining formula is same for war whatever is saw simply reduce it from the rp then garsh 101 so this is the like old format of formula okay and i guess there is no ewma Okay. <clears throat> Simple. This is to update your probabilities. Right. And for <clears throat> it starts with the omega and A and B. Again, these are the just the variations. These are the weights. You have to remember the formula. That is Gapil provided the uh, variance long run variance that is omega not the omega that is gamma multiplied by vl long run variance multiplied with the gamma you will get the omega alpha beta or a b whatever is the variation these are simple weights every information will be provided the simplest question to solve in the exam is the garch and ewm model if you remember the formula you will be able to solve it okay next is the risk neutral valuation again this is for the binomial trees like this right binomial trees for the option pricing now the formula or the step starts with the calculation of the u and d if u and d is not provided there is a possibility recently gap is providing u and d directly if the u and d is not provided you have to calculate with the help of standard deviation sigma root t e to the power sigma root t will provide you the u and then e to the power minus sigma root t will provide you the d or simply one minus u will provide you the d take u and d and then probability okay so this is simply the return okay this is this is r e to the power r minus d u minus d and then probability of downward moment so upward moment downward moment okay so again you have to remember these these formulas black scholes metan model not likely to get tested this particular part that is a big formula part but i would recommend you to remember it like put your best efforts in remembering this particular formula reason is very simple even if you don't get question on this particular formula in frm part one this is very important for frm part two frm part two you will get the probability of default and you have to use the same formula similar formula not the same formula recent trend is gap provides d1 d2 then you are asked to calculate c0 or p0 depending on the scenario now the general question by students what is nd1 nothing assuming this is the distribution this d1 is the z value just imagine this is the z value okay this is d1 this is your d1 so nd1 is probability captured till this area remember if this is put option then you have to go with the 1 minus nd1 that is this area got it 
so it is simple calculate the answers simply like take the nd1 the general error or the uh, like problem is this nd1 only then we have expected stock price basic not testable put call parity then delta gamma vega are generally not testable in the exam okay gap is not going to ask you any question on this why gap generally gap will provide you the delta gamma beta everything and then you have to do your calculations or generally in greek you will get a theory question okay then portfolio delta can be asked say delta of asset 1 asset 2 asset 3 are provided and you are you have to calculate the delta of the portfolio next is clean and dirty price we already discussed spot rate again my recommendation is don't go for the formula and all try to go with the uh, concepts okay then holding period return again i don't recommend the formula par rate not testable if you get the question simply use the calculator again not testable perpetuity testable y divided by c this formula is very basic then you have realized yield formula bvt and it's simply the today's price of bond minus yesterday's price of bond plus whatever the coupon you earned divided by yesterday's price yesterday as in the previous period's price then bond price calculation this is the formula i don't recommend it like it is difficult to calculate it in the exam and gap is not testing question like this okay so but you should need to know because anyway you you are going to use this particular formula in the bootstrapping right bootstrapping so you must remember it then dv01 change in bond value divided by yield change in one basis point remember this is one basis point this is one basis point that's why we are multiplying it with the 10000 okay to convert it into the basis points fine then modified duration not testable effective duration testable so bv uh, minus delta change and minus bv plus delta change that is if the yield goes down then what is the bond price if gold yield goes up what is the bond price and divided by 2 into bv multiplied by change in yield bond value multiplied by change in yield okay so then you will get the effective duration effective duration is testable highly testable then convexity not testable as such even if you get the question in this like it is simple here remember you have to use the either if this information is not provided then you have to use the calculator tib2 plus calculator this is very easy to calculate okay gap will provide you the specific information like if the yield is increased this is the bond price if yield is decreased this is the bond price and this is the original bond price simple this is a plus minus and so on remember this is minus 2 into bv because effectively you are adding two bonds uh, two bonds for, uh, price here this will result into some difference which is greater than bv0 and bv0 is somewhere in between here right so that difference you want to compensate you just want to calculate the difference that's why we are reducing it by 2 into bv and then divided by change in bv0 multiplied by delta yield right so this is all about the formula revision okay so see you in the next video thank you everyone and all the best for your exams